This is the plaintiff, Edward Hunter. He says he hired the defendant to install nine new windows in his house, gave him a 50% deposit, and it's been over a year, and the guy still hasn't done the work. He's tired of this man's lame excuses and thinks it's best to let the courts handle this from here on out. So he's suing for the $1,967 he's owed. This is the defendant, Frank Liso. He says he received the windows in December, and there was a very bad spell of cold weather, so window installation would be impossible because the caulk freezes. In January, he got an irate message from the plaintiff saying he wanted to cancel the job. Well, he custom ordered the windows. They're ready to be installed, and he has no idea why they're in court today. He's accused of being a real pain in the glass. <laughs> All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the dock of the plaintiff hired the defendant to install nine windows. It's been more than a year and nothing. But the defendant says the winter was real bad and the caulk would freeze. It's the case of caulk blocked. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome, Edward Hunter, you are suing <clears throat> Frank Liso's company. You don't want us to mention the name of the company. For $1,967, an amount of a deposit that you paid him, and according to you, you never got your windows. That is correct. According to you, he's the one who breached the contract by trying to withdraw. <laughs> How did you find Mr. Liso in order to contract him to do this work? I'm not really sure. I had gotten several different estimates. I don't know whether I got them in one of those packets that come in the mail or online. So some kind of advertisement. It was wasn't worth a mouth. It was not okay. a referral. All right. So you got estimates from a couple of different companies? Yes. All right. And then you met him, you met his, and you hired that company? Yes. Because it was the cheapest or because you liked it or because of it was some the cheapest. combination? Okay. It was the cheapest. All right. So um, did you f uh, fill out a written contract with him? Yes. Okay. May I see it? Do you have a copy mm -hmm. of it? I do. And do you have a copy of it? Yes, I do. I want to make sure I'm looking at the same thing. So can you show me yours, too? So you hire him in October, and the price for nine windows, uh, the quote was 3999 Not 4000 That's correct. 3999 All right. And what do you do? I gave him a uh, down payment of $1,967 on the day we signed the contract. Where's the actual contract? Who has the original contract? Everybody's handing me copies. Where's the original? I probably have it out in the car and gave you a copy by accident. Well, yeah, yours doesn't have the back, which is kind well, of critical, don't you think? Yes, Your Honor. It's oh, right you just didn't give it to me? Yes. All right, let's see why. All right, so what happens? Uh, when was he supposed to come in, according to you? It was verbal, but it was supposed to be the windows should have been done in about four weeks, uh, delivered in about four weeks, and work would get done shortly after that. So right. I was figuring four to six weeks. And what happened instead? Uh, after about eight weeks and no windows, I kind of got that bad feeling that something might be wrong. And then? And then on January 1st, I got a text message saying that half the windows were the wrong size, uh, that he had, the, that installer no longer works for him, and that he was cleaning up all his mistakes. But the installer is the one who ordered the windows? He measured them, Your Honor. I ordered them. Oh, he measured incorrectly. Yes, Your Honor. So I was going to, you know, install the windows that fit, order the windows that ne needed to be reordered. But why was so much time passing? Getting a new installer from firing the guy that made all the measurement mistakes. And Mr. Hunter said he wasn't in a hurry in the, originally. I did try to uh, schedule an installation December 19th, which he couldn't do because he was going away. On the 31st, I went out to load up the trucks. That's when I discovered the mismeasures. How did you discover it? Normally, when the windows get ordered, they go directly into the warehouse. And uh, as I was pulling his order, I noticed the discrepancies. How, what did you notice specifically? Um, a couple of the windows were short. Short in width. when you compared them to what? The, the paperwork that I had. Okay. So then your installer, you wouldn't know before getting to his house right. that the installer had mismeasured. That's so it's correct. that you misordered. How is it that you would see? that the windows were too short compared to with a measurement at your spot, uh, then how is that the installer's fault? Aren't you just going to bring no. the windows over and install them because you assume Honor, everything's fine? Your I made fine? a mistake there. I made oh, a mistake. Oh, okay. There. Tell me what mistake you made there. Okay, if the uh, defendant mismeasured the windows, it's been months of delays. Can the plaintiff cancel and get his money back? Yes, I think so. Because? 
Uh, well, he'd cause him distress, and um, he's not sticking to the original agreement. Not sticking to the agreement. That sounds right to me. Going inside the courtroom. We got a hold of Mr. Hunter. I got a hold of Mr. Hunter, and uh, after he said he wanted to cancel and all this. When did he say that? He said he wanted to cancel on December or January 1st. Okay. Okay. Why on January 1st are you guys talking about windows? <laughs> on January 1st, Mr. Liso sent me the text saying that the windows were incorrect. January 1st. Being but how would you know on January 1st? Let me see the text and, and be. Te is, is that not New Year's Day for everybody else? Yeah, in but the we world? Just, like, we just so to get why are you giving that bad news on New Year's <laughs> Day? Oh my gosh. And telling them what we. Not easy. And how did you know on January 1st? That's not the day you went over there in the middle of the night and measured. I mean, when did you know? On the 31st, I, that's when I checked everything and realized so it was. Was a he at your house on the 31st? No, ma'am. No. Okay, what day? What did you? Ch then once again, we're back to square one. Who's on first? Then you weren't at his house when you discovered that it was mismeasured. You looked down, and it turns out you ordered the wrong windows. If you can find all that out from your own paperwork in your own place without going to his place, then you don't know that the installer measured wrong. The installer would measure. The installer would say it's three feet. You would order three feet. You would pick up three feet, you would go to the window, you would say, oh my God, it's three and a half feet. That's how it would work. But you keep going back to telling me that you're discovering it on your own property. So if you're discovering your property, the distributor's property, wherever that is, then that means that you, what the window in your possession is not the same measurement as the original installer who you're blaspheming, okay, measured. It is, that's, if you discover it on the spot, then this measurement by the installer is not matching what you ordered. Gotcha? Gotcha. Okay. Now, aside from all of that, the second page of the contract that you didn't hand me says that you're supposed to start the job in 60 days, right? Yeah. Is that why you didn't hand it to me? No, ma'am. To be started within 60 days and completed within 120. Okay, was it started uh, within 60 days? No, we never got together until December. Right, so the answer is no, you didn't do what the contract says. Right. And you couldn't anyway, because you ordered the wrong windows. Right. So then you send him a notice saying he is breaching the contract. Well, he sent me a voicemail canceling. Yeah, right. And then you say to him, well, I hereby declare you have breached the contract? Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous when I say it, right? It does. Okay. <laughs> How much money did you hand him? $1,967? That's correct. Okay. I am ordering you to return the $1,967 plus your court costs. Good day, gentlemen. Well, it should be interesting to hear what the defendant has to say after hearing that gavel come down. Well, I'm not happy about it, but, uh, you know, I additionally didn't want to hurt Mr. Hunter either. I just felt that we both kind of got the bad end of it. Well, he got the bad end of it. Well, he's getting his money. How did you get the bad end of it? I got a bunch of windows I can't do anything with. That's not his fault, is no, it? No, it's not. Or, right? No, it's not. All right, so what are you going to do with those now? Trash them. All right, right down around the corner this way. All right, so come on in here and... All right, so you're feeling on this outcome here? You got everything you've sued for? I believe it was fair. Mm-hmm. Where'd you find this guy, the cheapest? He was the cheapest. I didn't go by that cheapest. old, take your highest and lowest and go in the middle theory. I went right for the cheapest. Lesson learned. And the cheap comes out... Cheap. Very <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Harvey? Okay, there are magic words. We've talked about them before. If time really matters to you in a contract, the words, time is of the essence. Write that in.